Okay, folks, everybody has checked in, so we're going to get started. Uh, if you're out of your car, if you could go back to your car, we'll give you a minute or so to go back. It should be the same already. Where should we go? Where should we be? Yeah, that'd be good on this. Okay. I'm just hanging out here. This is our treat. All right. Uh, good morning and welcome back to the special town meeting. Uh, the format for today's meeting is clearly very unusual. So please bear with me while I give some just procedural information before we get started. Uh, and before we get started, I just want to make sure everybody's able to hear us. So I'm going to ask right now that you hold your vote ticket out the window of your car. That's going to tell us that you're able to hear us on the radio okay. I see quite a number of them. Uh, please look at the cars around you. If you see a car with a person in it and no vote paper, they may not have their radio running or they may not be tuned to the right frequency. Just remember that we're on 107.7 FM. I'm sure everybody in the houses across the streets appreciating hearing this right now. Uh, all right, so if anybody is... What's that? All right, we're hearing over here that it's very staticky. Is, is anybody else having that problem? All right. I don't think he's going to pop out now. Well, if we have to do that, at least at least we can hear enough to do that. Okay, folks, we're going to try switching to frequency 94.9 FM and see if that one comes through clearer. So please try 94.9 FM. Folks, we're now broadcasting on 94.9. Please, uh, again, if you can hear us, hold your vote paper out the window. And if there's any problem with static, then we'll know. That's worse. Okay. Some of them are saying you might be speaking too loud. All right. Uh, a couple of people have said that it might be that we're sitting too close to the microphone, or I guess right now just that I am, so we're going to try that as well. Are we still on 94.9? Yes. Okay, we're still on 94.9. How is this? Is anybody able to hear us now? If you can hear... No, I'm getting thumbs down from the from the truck in the back. It's all static on 94.9. Go back to what you had Okay, folks, we, we're trying switching back to 1077. I, I, I wonder if the police are fire radio uh, upset at all. Okay, folks, we're back on 1077. Uh, how are we doing this time? If you can hear us, I'm getting some thumbs up. Can you hear us? Can you hear us clearly? Thumbs up. Excellent. If there is anybody that absolutely cannot hear us, well, then you're not going to hear me giving these instructions, but just flash your lights or something if you absolutely positively cannot hear us. I don't see any lights flashing. All right, I think we're going to be good. If at any time you're unable to hear us, and we'll just remember for everybody up at the table and for anybody that comes to the speaking microphone, just uh, stay about six inches back from the microphone maybe. 
Uh, if you're unable to hear us at any point during the meeting, let us know. Today's meeting is a continuation of the meeting that began on February 15th. This is not a new meeting. We're just picking up where we left off in February. At that meeting, we already approved Article 1 on your warrant, so we won't be talking about that today. Uh, we then approved Article 2 contingent upon the petitioners returning with a revised copy of their proposed legislation. Today, that is what we are voting on, the proposed legislation. When the meeting begins, I will ask for a motion to accept the legislation as on file with the Board of Selectmen on July 24th, 2020. This is the motion that will start our discussion. One of the petitioners will then come forward to explain any revisions that have been made to the legislation since February. Following that, you'll have the opportunity to come forward to ask questions, propose amendments, or make motions just like we do at any other town meeting. Unless something unusual happens, at the end of the discussion, we'll take a final yes or no vote on the legislation. A yes vote will approve the legislation, a no vote will reject the legislation, and that will end the Lake District process for the time being. It will need to be brought back again if it's going to be debated further. Uh, today's meeting especially, because it's so unusual, I'm going to ask that you observe the following rules. They're the same rules we usually have, we're just going to be a little bit more strict about them today. If you want to speak, ask a question, or make a motion, you'll need to come to the microphone. You'll need to clearly identify yourself. You'll need to let us know at the very least what part of town you live in, a Sona to East Freetown. You don't have to give your address specifically. And you're going to need to hold your vote ticket. And that's how we're going to know that you are a voter because we're outdoors. We can't block everybody in the world from coming in. So we need to make sure that you're a voter. Um, in addition to voters, there are four members of the organizing committee from the Lake District who will be allowed to speak if they're helping ask questions or, or make part of the presentation. Uh, the microphone for everyone to come up to make motions or ask questions or speak is in the front center of the parking lot over by the flagpole. Hopefully you're all able to see the flagpole. It's in front of the lecture hall where we're all sitting. Uh, the microphone is up on the, uh, on the concrete by the flagpole. If you wish, again, if you wish to speak, ask a question or make a motion, you'll need to come to the flagpole. That microphone, as well as the microphones up here, will broadcast on the radio frequency. With that uh, general information given, I will now ask for a motion to accept the legislation as on file with the Board of Selectmen on July 24th, 2020. All right, I have that motion from Jay Sarsha in the front. Is there a second? Second. Came from over there somewhere. Second. All right, this gentleman has seconded it. He is holding the vote paper as well. So we have the motion and second to adopt the legislation. That begins our conversation today. So I'll now ask for somebody from the Lake District to come up and explain the changes that have been made since February. Yes, please, to the microphone. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. Before we begin, I need to point out one uh, change to the... Can everybody hear me okay? No. Am I allowed to remove my mask? Um, if you just, just stand a little bit closer, maybe you're tipping up. Okay, how's that? Uh, before we begin, I need to point out that there was one line in the legislation that was omitted. Uh, we spoke with town council before the meeting, and we need to uh, uh, add that line back in. It was inad inadvertently struck from the uh, legislation that we posted. Um, Are you getting a headlight flash? Oh, I'm getting a headlight somewhere. Speak up! Speak up! Can't stand right in front of the mic. How's this? Testing one, two, three. Thumbs up. All right. All right. Is this better? Yep. Okay. All right. So Jay, what? Um, guide us to exactly which section that line needs to be added back into. Okay. So section fourteen, there was a line stricken that says. The district shall include in its initial and all subsequent 
annual appropriations compensation for the town assessors and tax collector pursuant to the provisions of section 108B of chapter 41 of the general laws with respect to their duties and expenses hereunder. Basically, that's the line that says that the district will be paying back the town for the time that the town spends uh, help uh, with assisting in the tax collection. Okay. Do you, do you have any extra copies of that right now? Uh, in writing? Because we need to have a copy up here, so if you don't, I'll just have to take the copy you have. Yes, I, I, have, I have a copy. Okay. Um, just well, highlighting that line? Yep, yeah, we'll just need that before we vote, because that's going to have to be an amendment, and I'm going to take what you just said as a motion to amend to add that line in. We're going to need it before we vote on the amendment. Yes. Okay. Uh, is there a second to that motion? Second. All right. We do have a gentleman with a vote paper who seconded that. Um, Jay, if you just uh, just read it again one more time so folks have a general idea before we get the copy up here. Certainly. The district shall include in its initial and all subsequent annual appropriations compensation for the town assessors and tax collector pursuant to the provisions of section 108B of chapter 41 of the general laws with respect to their duties and expenses hereunder. All right, so at, later in the discussion when we move on to voting, we will be voting on amendments. That will be one of the amendments. Um, and we'll have that language up here and we'll read it again before it gets voted on. Uh, so if you'd like to go through it again now and just let us know any of the other changes that you've made since February. These are not amendments to the document in front of you. These are changes that were already made just since we were here six months ago. That's correct. So at the last meeting, uh, what we did was we watched the, the video from the last meeting and we listened to the people's concerns. And it seemed like... Uh, the first concern was the uh, legal description of who a proprietor would be, and it was voiced that um, one line in the uh, in section one uh, said that anybody anybody abutting a tributary to Long Pond would be part of the district, and that line was uh, was struck uh, struck from section one. We also struck uh, where it says proprietors of property directly abutting. Then there was wording with deeded rights of access. We struck that. Moving on to section three. Um, we struck the initial A, which read to repair, reconstruct, replace, and maintain the Long Pond beaches and tributaries to the pond within Freetown Lakeville, but exclusive of maintenance currently managed by the municipalities or the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Our goal there was uh, people were concerned that we were trying to uh, take over the beach or take over the boat ramp. So by striking that, it's clear that uh, what our purpose is is to monitor and test and treat the water in the pond and to take such action that may be necessary for the control of all nuisance flora and fauna. Again, just to reiterate, we want Long Pond to stay just like it is. We just want clean, weed-free water. In uh, letter E of the same section, Three. Again, we struck the, the line that immediately followed the word district that said including but not limited to beaches and boat ramp. That line was struck, uh, was taken out.
So then with the exception of the uh, what we need to amend, uh, those were those were the changes. And I hope that the the people are satisfied. All right, uh, that is the end of their presentation. So now is the time for anybody who would like to come up to ask questions or make statements or make amendments. Uh, you can come up to the microphone at this time. We'll give everybody a couple of minutes to be able to come up. Uh, when you do come to the microphone, please just remember to observe social distancing. You'll want to have a mask on and you'll want to be at least six feet away from the people who are around you. Also want to remember to bring up your vote ticket so that we'll know that you're a voter before you come to the mic. Um, are, all, are all you folks right at the front, are you planning to speak? Okay, if you, if, you, if you just hang out a little bit further away from the microphone, that way we keep the distance. Uh, Mickey, are you going to speak? Yes. All right, you'll be first. Come on up. Hi, my name's Mickey Yeah, I live in East Freetown. And I have a couple of questions for, I guess, Jay. Hey, Jay. When you first, um, first of all, I don't have any problem with cleaning up the pond and keeping yep. it safe. And Mickey, healthy. you got to face the microphone. Okay. Um, okay. When you first brought up the um, idea of formation of a district, you said it was because the availability of federal and state funds would only go to a district. Well, in the... Um, the uh, Mass Aquatic Invasive Species Handbook by the Mass Gov, it says any group or association can apply and receive federal funds. Also, they can receive state grants. You don't have to be a district to get funds. Speak towards oh, the moderator. No. Jay, Jay, when you answer, you're going to come over to the microphone. Yeah, I don't know. Is, are we supposed to be just discussing the legislation today, or is this an open forum to bring back uh, what we already discussed? We are voting on the legislation, but if I would say that that question goes to whether the legislation is needed at all or not, so I, I would just I would fold that in under that. Okay, so that that is a point well taken, though. Remember, folks, we've already voted. Uh, to approve the Lake District concept in February. We are today here specifically to discuss and debate the legislation and vote that up or down. So it, it is a little broad. I am going to ask Jay to answer that question, but please just keep that in mind. We are here today specifically for the legislation part of this. Yes, so there's been um, Long Pond Association. There's been uh, other associations that have been formed and uh, not to the point where they were a legal entity and that's what we're trying to do is to form a legal entity so that we can uh, obtain those federal funds uh, you know, I don't know I don't know really what else you're you're asking about the, this, the federal government will not give Jay Sarsha a half a million dollars to spend on Hold on, let, let him finish his answer first. All right, so that's what I'm saying. The federal government will not give me, uh, Jay Sarsha, a grant to clean up Long Pond. I didn't think that because... Oh, you, you, gotta, you gotta get real close. I, I disagree because in the, um, the booklet, it's uh, in the mass of the uh, Invasive Aquatic Species booklet, it says that any group or association can apply for federal funds up to 40% of the cost of the project. So and there was one more... Well, let, me, let me respond to that, please. So what you just said is that up to 40%. 40% is not going to eradicate the weeds in Long Pond, so that's why we need a district so that we can get 100%. Um, and the federal, the federal funding, every day that goes by, is is dropping. So every day that goes by, there's less and less funding available, and that's why the district needs to be formed so that we can self-fund. We can't 100% rely on federal funding, because if it's not there next year, then we need to self-fund, and that's what we're about. 
Jay, we're going to give you your own microphone so that you don't have to keep walking back and forth. You, you also said that, um, uh, excuse me, that you were going to have an estimate of the cost for cleaning the pond. Do you have a cost per acre to rid the pond of, of invasive aquatic species? We spoke with... We spoke with... Hello, testing, testing. We spoke with uh, Solitude Lake Management, and they gave us a verbal estimate. And until the district is formed, we would then pay, we would put out to bid uh, how much it would cost for to eradicate the weeds. In general, in Massachusetts, it costs between $500 and $1,000 an acre to clean up the pond. And you have 1,700. You're incorrect. The actual is five hundred to one thousand dollars of infested acre. Well, you so you don't treat un, you don't okay. treat areas that are not infested. So, so you're, you're saying all correct. areas of the pond are not infested. That's correct. The entire lake is not infested okay. yet. And you said that um, you were no longer going to include the boat ramp in um, it's part of the district. And the only reason I'm asking that is because Long Pond is a great pond, and Massachusetts general law says that that pond is available to everybody in the Commonwealth, reasonable access for fishing and boats. We've, we've gone through this. We have no desire to shut down the boat ramp. That's not what you told me the very first time. I know they changed. Yeah. But you came out very strong about the boat ramp and putting up a gate, blocking it, charging to the So yeah. that's the impression I got. That's, first that was several years ago, and we made it very clear at the last town meeting that that is not our intention, okay. and it does not say anything in this legislation to that point. Take my mouth. Is this better? Okay, sorry about that, folks. All right, we're, we're, all, we're all getting used to it today. Um, I'm just going to remind again, we're here today for the legislation. That is kind of broad again because there are some other uh, items that can come under that, but we're looking to stick primarily to the legislation today. Uh, sir? Good morning. Good morning. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Um, Good morning, uh, Marty Desgardens. I live on Island Road, East Freetown. Uh, I'm in favor of the proposal. Uh, I'm a third generation uh, resident or user of the lake. My grandson is a fifth generation, so it means a lot to us. Uh, one of the things that came up at the last meeting, the assessor brought up the fact of the cost to the town and I understand that, and I think it's been addressed in the new amendment. But as a 31-year-old, uh, uh, 31 years in the business as a real estate broker and a guy with an accounting degree, I'm willing to go on record to help the town, you know, donate my time, say, eight hours a week to uh, help facilitate the list, you know, of uh, owners on the lake. So I just wanted to, to mention that to Jay and to the committee. And we could probably find others that are willing to do that if, if it becomes a, a crunch to either the district or to the town. Um, and lastly, I just want to say uh, some people in opposition at the last meeting really had some good points. Like maybe the city of New Bedford should uh, pay for this or the state, um, but it's it's hard enough that we're coming to trying to come up to a, a decision on this. I can't imagine it'd be one in a million for the city of New Bedford to, to pay for this. And the state has already told us that this is the only way to go forward. So I'm hoping everybody can will vote uh, yes on the proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. My name is Michael Noyes. I live in East Freetown. I'm in favor of the proposal. And I just 
want to make another point that we cannot ask for funding. We cannot ask for funding without having a district. We think that there are going to be many opportunities to get something down the road with COVID financial experience on most towns and states. It's probably not going to happen in the near future unless we do it ourselves. Thank you. Sue? My name is Suzanne Parker. Is that it? Give, give us that angry mom voice. Okay. <laughs> My name is Suzanne Parker. I currently serve on the Freetown Board of Assessors, and I'm from Narrows Road in Asonic. I applaud the district for doing what you're doing, and the town is in favor, and the Board of Assessors as well is in favor of you doing this work. But we'd like to make a motion to amend the legislation to insert a new section authorizing the creation of a Lake District Board of Assessors and further to indicate wherever in the current legislation there is a reference to assessors, such reference shall be to the Lake District Assessors. All right, that motion has been made and seconded. Now, have you written that down generally? Yes. All right, so just the same as with Jay's, I'm going to need a, a copy of that before we vote on it. Can I bring it up right now? Yes, you can. Okay. Is it possible you could repeat that? Yes. So uh, just as a second reading, Sue's motion was to amend the legislation to insert a new section authorizing the creation of a Lake District Board of Assessors and further to indicate wherever in the current legislation there is a reference to assessors, such reference shall be to the Lake District Assessors. And if, uh, just, I'm just gonna clarify, if I understand the point of this is so that the Lake District would have its own board of assessors, uh, rather than the town, the two town boards of assessors, is that? The change in the legislation that I'm proposing would create, the, the district would have their own board of assessors, which would eliminate the Freetown board of assessors and the Lakeville board of assessors from having to undertake this. Therefore, any funds that you would be to contribute to help defray the cost like you've suggested would just be kept within the district in your own board. So, uh, in response to that, I, I think so we yeah, okay. So, just, uh, it's just in and out. Uh, if you could just explain the benefit of that. Would that be the town of Freetown and the town of Lakeville would not incur any cost or any manpower to have to identify properties that had deeded beef rights and they would not have to incur any cost as far as collection of taxes on an annual basis you would administer your own you be, you are your, you are asking to be your own governing district therefore why would each of us as a town be responsible for the collection of the taxes and whatnot. You're acting as your own business in a sense. Okay, so that could potentially um, it, it takes pose the burden a altogether off it's like if, like if I could give an example, we have uh, and I, I think I can point this out, we have an Asona Bay Association for the Osona Bay. They have their own association. They apply for grant funds. They are very active with the Lloyd Center. You know, they have a lot of things that they're doing. They ask their community, the properties that are listed under the Sony Bay Association, to collect an annual member cost. That sounds kind of like what you're trying to establish. Anyone with deeded rights to a Sony Bay Beach has to pay a fee. Well, that would be like them coming to us and asking us to identify. Sue, so, so somebody's yelling for you to speak toward the mic. 
we're trying to, I'm trying to give an example that of how the Lake District is their own, so to speak, association that you're applying to grant funds and able to get that through your designation. The example I'm giving is that like the Osona Bay Shore Association, it would be like a, an association coming to the town and asking us to oversee the collection of the fees and then reimbursing you or giving it to you down the road. You creating your own board of assessors and your own tax collection, we won't call it a tax, I don't know, fee. Okay, but we would be absolved of that. And I think what you may find beneficial with the way we're doing this, or asking it to be done, is that Lakeville may have a different way of doing it. So we have two different situations. This is gonna help you make it pass. Would the, would the board of assessors uh, be a, a subset of the towns? In other words, is it still would your board of assessors be a part That's of That's correct. No, they would not, they're not elected officials. Okay, so then I'd, I'd have to defer to the town council to ask if the, uh, if the district would have that right to collect, to so, collect a tax and to, um, all right. I mean, Mr. Moderator. Can, can everybody hear me? Yes. Um, to that question, I mean, we're, we're dealing with special legislation. When you're talking about uh, what, what are the rights of the district, the rights of the district created by the legislation. Um, I can't answer for the legislature, of course, but the intent is to create a circumstance where, and this is not collection, this is assessing, Board of Assessors. Um, this would essentially enable the, the district to establish its own Board of Assessors. That would be separate and apart from the town but that would be uh, a, a board of assessors that uh, would operate within the district itself. Again, I can't speak for how the, the legislature would view this, but the special legislation is setting up a whole, a, 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 essentially a governing body. Yeah. All right, now I, just before we go back, I know Lisa wanted to, to okay. add something into that amendment, so I'm gonna I, I recognize- I just have one more question. Hold, hold, hold on, okay. I'm just gonna have to recognize Lisa to add that in. So I want to amend Sue's amendment to include a district collector and district accountant. So you would be overseeing your entire operation? Yes, the, yeah. We realized that we'd have our own accountant. You gotta be one at a time. I, I guess the question we would have is, uh, the, the town is already collecting a tax bill. And all the other districts utilize the town tax collector to collect their tax. Yeah, it's a line item on the tax bill. It seems like it would be more appropriate to do what everybody else, you know, all the other uh, uh, districts are doing. I don't want to reinvent them and then find out that it doesn't work. All right, so what, what I'm going to just say, hold on for one second, because we got a little off track. Uh, we're going to come back. So when we go to actually vote on the amendment, we'll come back and have the lengthy discussion on each amendment. I want to let some of the next people that are in line come up and have their say. We're not shutting this off. We're just going to come back to it when we go, go to actually vote on the amendment. Yes, ma'am, come on up. Hi, um, my name is Linda Jardins, yes. and I live in Freetown. And uh, um, you might need to you might need to tip the microphone down a little bit. There you go. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Um, and I've been living on or near the lake for 50 years and using it. And um, I just wanted to say that I support this. And I feel that it may not be an absolute perfect solution, but I think that a lot of the changes that they've made in the legislation addresses some of the more concerning aspects of this that were presented earlier this year. And that said, it may not be perfect, but it's good. And I think it's really the only good chance we have right now to address this. And if we don't address it now, 
my fear is it will be too late. I've heard people talking about this for 25 years. If they've been aware of this. Nothing has been done substantively. And I think if we want to do something serious to address this, and if we don't, I'm afraid that the lake eventually, in another 25 years, will be dead. Um, I've seen it observe the encroachment of the invasive weeds. It's, it's frightening. Um, in certain areas of the pond, and it's getting worse. Um, so um, that's basically what I wanted to say. I think we need to do something, and if, I'm afraid if we don't do this now, it will be too late. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ma'am Hi, my name is Carol LeVay, and I live on Shawano Avenue, Freetown, probably one of the larger properties. Um, I first want to just thank the district for everything they are doing. I totally, we're totally behind them. We totally support them. And I, I agree. I'm pretty much going to reiterate what the previous speaker said. Um, it's, it's scary to go out on the pond now. We've been on the pond about almost 15 years in two different locations, and we've seen the changes. Um, we are out there all the time in the water with my grandson. We love the pond. We love the neighborhood. We're putting a lot of money into our property. Probably the last thing we want to see is higher taxes, but we know that we have to do this. This is something we have to do. As, as much as it may hurt now, um, the consequences down the road are just, they're just too much. Um, we won't have a lake. We won't have the safety. We already have some safety issues now with the weeds in certain areas. So again, i just like to say that I, I appreciate everything that's being done by the district and we are totally supportive of that. Uh, also, the amendments that have been made have answered a lot of our questions and resolved a lot of our problems. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take your motion to end discussion. Well, when I'm gonna, we got two people who are in line. I'm going to let them speak before I take any motion to call the question. But the motion that the gentleman in the front made a motion to call the question, that would end discussion. I'm not going to cut off the two people that have been waiting in the sun but then we will vote on that motion afterward because it is a proper motion. Oh, I'm sorry, we have three. I, I didn't realize that we had somebody up here also waiting. Okay, can everyone hear me? No. Okay. My name is Dan Crispin. You might, you might need to be just a little bit louder. My name is Dan Crispin and I live in East Freetown. My point is here that everyone has access to Long Pond, just not the people that would be taxed under this proposal. We have the Freetown Beach, the state boat ramp, which nobody stops access to, and many of the streets and dirt roads that lead down to the pond, and places like uh, the Eagles Club and Lakeville or Captain Bubs, where the general public has access to this. And yet you want to tax just a few people that live in the vicinity of the pond, and I just don't think it's fair. It's not fair to ask the few to pay for the benefit of the many. It's just not right. Uh, I live 200 yards from Long Pond, and I would be included in this tax proposal. But yet people in other areas that live one house lot away would not be taxed additionally for this proposal. Just not right. There are other groups, such as the Friends of Alewives, that take care of the Sipican and the Mattapoisa Rivers. They apply and are granted federal and state grants to do this. They hold fundraisers, and they do it without creating this entire bureaucracy that's going to cost us a lot of money. I just ask that you think about this and think that the few should not pay for the many. Everyone should be paying their fair share. And what about the watershed? What about Fall Brook and the pond on there? Those folks, are they going to be included? Because they certainly, the water that passes by their house is an impact on Long Pond as well as just the water in the pond itself. So my suggestion is that you find a private way to fund this, private way to be proactive, and not ask a small group of taxpayers to pay for something that is a benefit to anybody who shows up at the state boat ramp or any of the other access points in the pond. Thank you. Jay, just because um, this gentleman's a statement touched on this. I'm going to ask you again to mention what you did at the beginning about the tributary language. How February there was tributary language and, and today there's none. If you just just review that part again. So we did strike um, the language 
that included all properties, originally included all property, letting a tributary to Long Pond. We did strike that language. So but, it makes it even worse, as far as I'm concerned, that you're going to cut down even more the number of people that are going to have to pay for this. Mm -hmm. So understood, we all understand your frustration, and we're, I live on the thing I want. So we all agree, the last thing anybody wants to do is to pay more taxes. We've, I have personally sat through many meetings. Uh, you mentioned the Friends of Owl Life. I've sat through many meetings with the, uh, the association over on the Namaskit River, the, the Namaskit River Herring Fisheries Foundation. I went to meetings, I went to their meetings for over a year. Not every meeting, but most. And I witnessed over a two-year period their federal uh, applicate their application for federal funding. They were able to obtain one thousand dollars. One thousand dollars doesn't begin to help us eradicate the weeds in a lake that is one thousand that is better than one thousand seven hundred acres. So the fundraising that we've done, we've done hours and hours of fundraising and collectively i think we've fundraised close to thirty thousand dollars which i think is a, a, a great amount of money but again it doesn't come close to even starting to eradicate these weeds that's that's all i have in response to that i'd like to say that um, it is a, a burden on the taxpayers. And on a personal note, I worked under Social Security my entire life. And what I get from Social Security on an annual basis, 63% of that income goes to Freetown real estate taxes. I'm a senior citizen. I'm on a limited income. This should be spread over the entire town, not just the folks that live close to the pond or have access to it. It's so wrong on so many points that you just, you're putting the burden on so many, so few people. If you want to do this, God bless you, but let the whole town pay or the whole state. Long Pond, I believe, is the second largest lake in Massachusetts and has public access, which the largest lake, Quabbin, doesn't have. So we're a recreational resource for people from all over the state, and yet you want just a few folks to pay to get the pond back where it used to be. I'm all for this program if it was funded in a different way, but I just can't see putting the burden on the very few folks that, in a lot of cases, live in converted summer cottages because they're in the end of their years and struggling financially. To put an extra burden on them for the benefit of the people from Boston with their big yachts that bring them down here and stick them in the water just doesn't seem fair to me on so many levels. And I ask you to please reconsider this and consider the people that are not as fortunate as you and don't have the resources to be able to carry this burden. Thank you. Hi, Mark Jaros uh, from Minnesota. What's that? Can I respond to that first? And if Mark started talking, so he'll let you. Thank you again, sir. Um, it is important just to mention that we do not want to burden people that that uh, that can't pay. Um, we want to say that the people within the district have the most to lose. The people within the district, property values will significantly decline. If that happens, the towns will have to then pay because, because our assessed values will go down, the town will suffer. There is included in the legislation an opt-out feature, uh, which helps with the people that can't afford it. Bye. Thank you.
Um, that goes to one of the questions that I had also. Um, I had just a question regarding the uh, Section 3. Oops. Mark, you got to talk a little section, bit louder. Section 3, line B, which goes to the budget. And there was no mention of how they were going to be assessed, what each individual homeowner would have to pay if there's a maximum based on income, what they could afford for the gentleman that spoke before me, etc. There's no mentions of that in there, how, how it would be done fairly, because there are some people that are well off on the pond compared to a lot of others that have cottages. So uh, the other question, the other recent thing I had was the assessor. Um, I think having a separate assessor is kind of self-serving um, because from there, they're going to determine who they feel would be within the district. Whereas if the town is doing it, I think it would be done on a fairer basis. That's all. Thank you. All right. Uh, as we said before, I'm going to I'm going to acknowledge uh, Lisa up here, who also wanted to speak, and then we have the motion to call the question. Uh, just, want to, just want to respond uh, to your first point uh, that uh, the, the assessment would would be uh, assessed according to your assessed value. So you're correct. There are some people that are more well off. Uh, those people are taxed more because their assessed value is higher. But if you have a hundred thousand dollar assessment on a on a cottage on Long Pond, you'd be a, your your burden would be much less. All right, Lisa. Hello, everybody. Um, again, um, I'm just going to reiterate some things that I uh, need to say out loud. Um, I've had a discussion with the group, and I'm just going to put this out there for everybody to consider. While I commend the efforts to bring additional attention to the problems of Long Pond, I have serious concerns over this legislation. The first off is, is this is created from the Berkshire County. So it's cookie cutted into working out or supposedly working out for the town. We are two different towns, two different counties. We have two different sets of bylaws and we're two different town governments. We're two boards of selectmen, two assessors, two accountants, two treasurers. So those are all things that have not been laid out in this legislation. It took us a long time to have um, a, a, a school district, um, and it took us a long time to make sure that we ironed out all of those matters. Right now, two thirds of the population of Long, Long Pond live in Lakefield. I'm here to serve the town of Freetown. Like that gentleman that just said he couldn't afford it, as much as I am to serve you guys over there who say you can't afford it. We will always be outvoted for the t from the town of Lakeville. Your makeup of the committee is seven committee members with two alternates. You didn't say they all had to be from Lakeville. You didn't say they all had to be from Freetown and nor did you say what the makeup would be. There's serious concerns there. I don't want the town of Freetown and its taxpayers to be subject to everything that the Lakeville um, jurisdiction wants. Also, this is not subject to Prop Two and a Half. So, not only would be you would the taxpayers have two and a half from the town, but they could also the people living on the on the pond be subject to more than two and a half. You know, I wish that this legislation group, the Long Pond District, would have come to us or me or the prior board or this current board and had worked together with both boards of selectmen from both towns. Please, both boards of selectmen from both towns form a coalition with our legislatures, with our senators, and be heard so it doesn't fall upon the people on Long Pond, it falls upon the both towns together. In the last couple of weeks, I think you've seen the dedication from this board to make improvements on the boat ramp and also on the beach. Do we have a ways to go? Yes, we do. But we have made cons a considerable difference. I and the town administrator, prior to Trevor getting here, worked with the legislation to get $40,000 for boat ramp improvements. I've also worked with Senator Rodericks 
to ensure that we have money available for the vase of weeds. I don't think it needs taxation or additional taxation. We have a capital stabilization fund. This board can, and the townspeople can vote to take money out of capital stabilization to start a fund to take care of the evasive weeds. It's a gem for this county. It's a gem for this town. It's a gem for the city, uh, for the towns of Lakeville and Freetown. And yes, we do need to take care of it, but not with additional taxation. Also, um, there are other things in the legislation that have not been um, laid out and um, have been brought to us by town council. And I'm just gonna ask him for his um, words on that. Okay, sure, Mark. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, I'll try to be quick. Um, Obviously, town council doesn't take a position on uh, legislation, but I, I do have uh, a couple of concerns about the, the drafting of the legislation that I, I wanted to point out. Um, a, a simple one at the beginning, there is a definition in section one of the depth of the district itself, and uh, the definition section one says, district shall be described as the proprietors of property. Districts are made of property if you look in section two, it talks about membership in the district shall consist of the proprietors. Proprietors are members of the district, but the, pro but the district itself should be made of the property. So I think that that uh, um, description in section one, uh, I would recommend that the, land, the words properties of be deleted so that the district is the property. Um, that's, a, that's a suggestion. I don't get to make motions. So it's just a recommendation. I do have a concern that uh, there's an initial meeting that's going to be called by the selectmen of both Freetown and Lakeville. Um, I know the financial issue has been addressed, but the concern is that, uh, as, as uh, the selectmen previously noted, there is no provision for how the two, the two boards are going to work together. You have two boards, one with uh, five members, one with three members. Uh, the issue of how the, uh, the two boards are to vote to establish a meeting and how that meeting is to be conducted. So there is that concern. There's also provision in section four uh, for proprietors to vote by proxy. But while uh, later in the, the uh, legislation talks about how the proxy process will be addressed by the bylaws, that proxy process well, would not, that, that bylaw process would not have been established for the initial meeting. So you have an initial meeting where it's unclear how the selectmen are going to, to uh, oversee the calling of that meeting, and then you have proxy voting without any definition as to how that at that initial meeting proxies are to be allowed. So consideration might be made to eliminate the proxy reference for the initial meeting. Uh, dealing with it in the bylaws uh, uh, certainly could be addressed, but uh, you might want to consider whether the initial meeting should not should not allow for proxy voting. Um, then there are uh, just in general, I think there is. I raised the concern about uh, uh, the burdens on the town, the, the Board of Assessors, the uh, tax collector, and uh, I know that, that has been addressed by some of the motions, but again, it is a concern that, uh, while I understand that there's a you know, tax bills already going out, there is uh, there are additional burdens and additional requirements that's uh, a practical matter and subject to whether the uh, proposed motions would be uh, would be accepted. So those, just, those are some uh, brief comments that I have. I don't think they're uh, too heavy duty, but uh, just suggestions for the uh, the drafters of the legislation. Thanks. I'm, so what's going to happen now, I'm, I'm going to allow Jay to respond, and then, like I had said before, we did have a cutoff point because we had the motion to call the question. When we do that, uh, after Jay's finished, then I'll go over what's going to happen from there. So Jay, if you want to take a moment to, to respond to any of those comments. Certainly, thank you again. Uh, uh, Lisa and, and, and the Board of Selectmen, we, we do want to say thank you. I think everybody in the parking lot here wants to say thank you uh, for the changes that have been made. Uh, the $40,000 um, for the boat ramp is certainly commendable. Uh, but again, just to reiterate that that's not our cause. That's not what we're here for. Um, you had mentioned that uh, the legislation was pulled from a Berkshire County district. It's also the same legislation that has been used in many other districts. So 
it's not the only district that this legislation has been used for. Um, and yes, we're dealing with Freetown and Lakeville. Yes, there are two municipalities, but this will be one district with a common goal. So it's about time that the two municipalities get together and figure out how to make this common goal work. Um, if I may, if the language, this language has been accepted. Um, the, the, the language in section one, uh, without making any amendments, would have st still said proprietors of the property. So this particular language has been accepted by the Senate and several times. But if that if it's if it would please the town council, then I would make the motion to amend the word proprietors in section one to be changed or just be uh, struck uh, struck so that it reads property directly abutting. Okay, that uh, that is a motion. Is there a second to that motion? Okay, this gentleman in the front who seconded the motion. And uh, lastly, uh, just to, speaking to the proxy, uh, there, there was concern at the previous meeting, uh, and uh, other people have said this is uh, taxation without representation, and there were people that were worried about the people that live or own property on Long Pond but are not registered voters because they actually live in another state. Uh, so I believe that that's where the disconnect comes uh, for the initial meeting but then uh, the people that own property and uh, will be part of the district but aren't um, registered voters uh, will then be a part of the district and then will have the ability to vote but if they're not uh, you know if they live nine months out of the year in another state a small invasion going on I'm then, not sure what's uh, happening here they would need the ability for proxy voting You guys didn't like raise an army or something to come in in the middle of this, did you? Yeah. But just want to say thank you to the town for your time and we hope this goes the right way. Thank you. All right, folks. So at this point in time, we're going to take a vote on the motion to call the question. Uh, what that motion does is it ends all debate and discussion on the main motion. We will then move on to the various amendments that have been made. Uh, the motion to call the question on the main motion will not prevent discussion on the individual amendments. It will, dis it will prevent discussion on the main motion. So we'll still have some time to, to debate a little bit about the amendments themselves. Uh, this is not a debatable motion itself, the motion to call the question. So we're gonna just take a straight vote on that all those in favor of calling the question and ending the general discussion, please hold your vote ticket out the window of the car and the counters will go around and they will count the votes. I'm not sure. For voting, you guys might have to go back to your cars for voting. Just I don't know what system they've, they've worked out for voting.
Okay, all the yes votes, you can put your tickets down. We'll now take the vote uh, for no. So these are folks who do not wish to call the question. I'll see him. <laughs> it might be. We don't see the sea of color, so I'm pretty sure we know how this is going to go, but we've got to check anyhow. Okay, so the results of that, uh, the yeses were 99, the noes were zero. So we have called the question, we have ended debate on the main motion. We're now going to move on to, uh, this is gonna sound a little bit weird because we have to do these in a particular order. So the first amendment that we're going to vote on is going to be, you'll recall that uh, Sue Parker was one of the assessors, got up and made a motion to have uh, the Lake District have its own assessors. And then Lisa made a motion to amend that amendment to add in for the Lake District to have its own tax collector and accountant. And what we're actually going to vote on first is just whether or not to add tax collector and accountant to Sue's previous motion. I know that seems a little weird, but we have to do them individually and we have to do them in a particular order. So uh, what I'm gonna ask for now, is there anybody who has discussion only on adding a tax collector and a town accountant to that motion? We are not debating whether or not to have assessors and we're not debating any other part of this. We are only discussing whether to add tax collector and accountant to that motion. 
Jay Sarsha, 22 Gerard Ave. Um, speaking for our committee, uh, we're not in favor of, of adding that language or uh, making that amendment. Okay. Uh, so the, the organizing group has stated they are opposed to adding tax collector and accountant. Uh, is there anybody else that would like to discuss specifically that amendment before we vote again? Okay, I don't see anybody coming up, so we're now voting specifically on that question. All those who are in favor of adding tax collector and accountant to the motion for assessors. This is not a vote on the assessors. This is a vote only on adding tax collector and uh, accountant, excuse me, to that motion. All those in favor of that, please raise your tickets. <laughs> okay, all who are, uh, you folks can put your tickets down, all who are opposed to adding tax collector and accountant to that language, please raise your ticket. This is for opposed to doing that. <laughs> right. Yeah, this one doesn't have a curtain. Okay. 
Okay, so on that question, uh, whether or not to add tax collector and accountant, the yeses were 16 and the noes were 74, so that amendment is defeated. The next amendment that we move on to will be Sue's amendment regarding the assessors. Sir? Is that so? Same with over there. I wonder if it has to do with the double mess. How about, okay. That is strange. So what, what this gentleman was just telling us is that when we're sitting up here talking to each other about beach chairs, you guys can hear us a lot better than you can when we're talking about everything else. I like the ones with the cup holders myself, but... Um, I'm going to try. I'm going to try leaving my mask down for a moment, since I'm the only one using this microphone, and just see if that makes a difference. It might be the fabric with the fabric. Um, so what we're going to vote on right now, this is the amendment that says uh, to amend the legislation to insert a new section authorizing the creation of a Lake District Board of Assessors, and further to indicate wherever in the current legislation there is a reference to assessors, such reference shall be to the Lake District Assessors. So this is, um, like I said, we voted a moment ago just on adding a tax collector and accountant. We are now voting only on adding a Board of Assessors to the Lake District structure. So is there anybody who has questions, comments, or concerns strictly about adding a Board of Assessors to the Lake District? And we have one coming. Sue Parker, Board of Assessors, Freetown, Mass. I just want to make it clear that the motion that I made would be in reference to the creation of their own Board of Assessors, but only in relation to the fee for the, the Water District. Not, they would not be governing the taxation valuations of the town properties of the residents that reside there. Okay. That's a fair clarification. So again, um, this Board of Assessors this board, this board of assessors would be only for the purpose of assessing the Lake District tax. It would not have anything to do with the value of property or the general tax bills that everybody is already paying. And we have a, a few more people coming up. Denise Lamarow-Masonet. My question is, even if they were independent, wouldn't they still need to go to the towns to get information. So it seems to me that it's going to be double duty. Your town assessors, your town collectors are still going to be involved. It makes more sense to me to, to reimburse them rather than to try to create a new level that we now need to fund. I think in the long run, it's going to be more expensive if you have your own assessors, et cetera. Yep, I'm going to have Jay respond and then Sue, and then we'll move on. Um, thank you very much, ma'am. That's exactly how we feel. Thank you. All right. Um, sir, if you hold on one second, I'm, just, I'm going to ask the assessor to respond, and then, then you'll have your, your turn. It is not double work to do. They'd be doing, in essence, trying to identify the properties that have deeded back beach rights, we have no mechanism in the town of Freetown's Board of Assessor's Office that would be able to identify those properties without doing complete title searches on ones that we think would fall under that. Um, there's no 
bulletproof way for us to determine that. The amount of manpower that as a board, as a town of Freetown, would require us to do that, it might be cheaper for you to do it than for us to have to, right. Well, you know, that these are all the questions that we don't have answers to that wasn't proposed. So how can we vote on something that we don't know how the money is going to be administered? Like, how are we going to, if, if, the, if the town is responsible for collecting these monies from all the people that you're saying have deeded beach rights, how, what is the process involved for us to give you the funds? I mean, we have no power over your entity. You have created this district that gives town of Freetown no rights to oversee the budget, to oversee what you're doing with the funds. So the townspeople that you're representing for this district have no control other than the board that you've set up. And kind of to go off of what Lisa said, we don't know the details of the board that you guys have created, whether there's percentages that are from required from Lakeville, Freetown, and the combination of the two towns, I think, is what's making it more difficult. If it was more clear cut, and we were working together as a town, I agree with this gentleman that the entire town would be taking on this entire project, but you guys have chosen to do this as a district, and that's okay. Um, but I just wanted to make it clear that the manpower and the amount, we've talked about this, a title search done by an attorney is going to run $400, $500 per property. So you guys can do the math on that, and we'll go from there. Just because uh, I'm sure some of the people in the front row may have seen me checking my phone. That was just letting me know that we had approximately 116 voters in attendance today. That question had come up in February, um, and that count was taken. They haven't counted the book exactly, but it's approximately 116. That's just a point of information. Um, Jay, you can you can go ahead if you're... Okay, so I just wanted to point out that the district is a municipal entity subject to audit by the State Oversight Committee. Uh, so in her speaking to the fact that there's no oversight, um, the, the district is subject to audit by the State Oversight Committee. But not by the town. And as far as identifying the properties, it would be upon us to identify the properties uh, a through the legal description in the legislation and we've all actually already identified all the properties and that's how we're getting our numbers as to uh, how many people would be in the district. Yes sir. And Chris Benny's Freetown again. Um, I would rather see the Freetown Board of Assessors handle it because they don't have a dog in that fight, you know. They represent the whole town. People that represent the district, they have a bias. I'm not saying they do, but it's just a possibility that you wouldn't get with a board of assessors that handles the whole town. Is there any additional questions or discussion related specifically to this amendment? I don't think there is. See Jay and Sue talking off to the side. I'm not sure if, if either of them is going to add in. They're good. Okay. Uh, so we're going to move on to take the vote now on this amendment. And uh, so again, this amend amendment before us is to amend the legislation to insert a new section authorizing the creation of a Lake District Board of Assessors and further to indicate wherever in the current legislation there is a reference to assessors. Such reference shall be to the Lake District Assessors. All those who are in favor of that amendment, please raise your vote tickets. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, uh, you can put your tickets down. Now, all who are opposed, all who are opposed to this amendment, please put your tickets up. Okay, the yeses were 15, the noes were 75, so that amendment is defeated. Uh, the next amendment that we are going to vote on is the amendment that in section one of the legislation deletes the words proprietors of. This was just that text change. Um, so right now in section one, it reads proprietors of property directly abutting lawn, lawn pond, and so on. And this would just remove those first two words so that it would read property directing, directly abutting lawn pond. Uh, is there any question or discussion on simply deleting those two words? I'm gonna try just a little bit differently this time. I'm gonna try just for a visual. If you hold up your vote tickets for yes in favor of deleting those two words. Okay, uh, you can put your tickets down. Let's try now opposed to deleting those two words. All right, I, I see considerably fewer tickets, so I'm gonna call that as a visual vote that it was in favor by the majority. If anybody disputes that finding, now would be the time to, to make yourself known. All right, we're gonna call that majority was in favor of that amendment to delete those two words. Uh, Jay, I need the text of your amendment now. Okay, so this amendment, this is our last amendment before we move on to the main motion. Uh, this amendment will add in section 14 of, this amendment will add in section 14 of the legislation the following sentence. The district shall include in its initial and in all subsequent annual appropriations 
compensation for the town assessors and tax collector. Pursuant to the provisions of section 108B of chapter 41 of the general laws with respect to their duties and expenses hereunder. Uh, is there any question or discussion on this particular amendment? All right, I am actually gonna ask one question to town council. Uh, my recollection, section 108B of chapter 41 deals with the salaries of elected officers. However, our tax collector is appointed. So is this going to result in not compensating her? or reimbursing her or however. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, chapter 41, section 108 addresses elected officials. 108B addresses uh, reimbursements from districts. So it's, it's a separate section. Okay, thank you very much. So again, this amendment will add the following sentence. The, the district shall include in its initial and in all subsequent annual appropriations, compensation for the town assessors and tax collector pursuant to the provisions of section 108B of chapter 41 of the general laws with respect to their duties and expenses hereunder, Is there any further question or discussion on this particular amendment? All right, we do have one more person coming up. Uh, Tim McIntosh from the summit. Uh, I'm sitting with the town accountant. She has a question. I don't, she didn't know if she was proper for her to make questions. Uh, yes, as a department head of the town, I can allow Kim to come up and, and ask the question. Kim is our town accountant. She does not live in town, but she is going to ask her question. We're going to let this happen. Thank you, everyone. My concern is there are other costs associated with moving forward with this proposal, aside from personnel, um, especially just direct salary. Um, so there is no provision at this point to reimburse the town any of those other costs. Um, so my concern is that the town is ultimately subsidizing uh, this activity. Um, so I would suggest that that be considered. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna ask uh, the town council to address that if, if he may know, as he did the last time, something that we don't know. Uh, Mr. Moderator, the section that we're talking about specifically addresses the uh, um, assessment and collection of taxes. It doesn't address uh, administrative costs of the town. Okay, are there any further uh, questions, comments, or discussion on this amendment? I do not see any, so we're gonna move on to the vote. Um, since this is more than just deleting two words, we're gonna go back to doing a hand-counted vote. All those who are in favor of adopting this amendment, please hold your vote tickets up now. I'm hearing that the, the speaker's microphone is coming through clearly, but this microphone still is not. I, I get, I'm gonna have to go back to talking about beach chairs. That's the only way you guys can hear me. <laughs> Oh, 
We're, we're trying again to fix whatever's going on with this microphone. Um, I understand there were some people that had difficulty hearing on that last vote. Could you, can you hear better now what I'm saying? All right, we're getting some thumbs up. Um, is, is there anyone who may have been unable to hear what we are doing who would question the vote that we've taken so far and would feel that we would need to, to count it again? Okay, so what we voted on a second ago was people who were in favor of adding the language regarding reimbursing the assessors and tax collector uh, for expenses. We are now gonna take the vote of people who are opposed to that amendment. So if you are opposed to that amendment, please hold up your vote ticket now. So we're, we're still getting some reports that there are some people who cannot hear the microphones up here and, and I'm, I'm not sure what's going on, if it's static or if it's not coming through at all. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure because this one was the clearer microphone before. Can everybody hear me? Uh, all right, I'm getting a lot of thumbs up for Jay. Can everybody hear me? no difference between me and Mike? Are there people in the back that cannot hear Mike? The thumbs down, is that saying that you cannot hear Mike? So a couple of people can't hear you. That fellow looks like he's coming up out of Well, now, see, I'm getting, I got a text message just now that said this microphone is crystal clear, so I can't figure out what's causing the problem between them. Oh, yeah. would you bring that, that mic back over to him? All right, um, I was asked to try just announcing the radio frequency again. We are on 1077 FM. Uh, what we're trying to determine is why there seem to be a couple of cars that can't hear us and everybody else is telling us that it, there's no issue. So we're trying to figure that part out now. 
Mike, apparently what's happening is you're speaking too loudly into the microphone, so they're saying that when you turn your head and you're speaking quietly, they can hear you crystal clear, hmm. but when you're speaking into the microphone, it's static and they can't hear you. Over-modulated is the word that I just heard. How, how about now? The folks that were having trouble hearing before. All right, I'm getting the thumbs up from somebody now. Yeah. Who knew? All right, everybody make a note the microphone has to be sideways. 1077 FM, the Eponiquit Radio Network. The, uh, I'm sorry, the yes votes on that amendment were 66. The no votes for six, were 16. So that amendment has been adopted. Uh, adding that language into section 14 related to reimbursing the town for expenses. We are now going to move on to the main motion. We took a vote earlier to call the question, so the main motion is no longer debatable, amendable, anything like that. This is now our straight up or down yes no vote on whether or not to approve the legislation as we have amended it and to move it forward. And this question was asked and answered in February. I'm just going to ask it again now and ask town council to answer it so that it's on the record again today. Since we have uh, done this and we're voting on specific legislation language, it's my understanding that if and when this goes to Lakeville, they cannot amend this further. They have to accept what we voted today. Is that correct? Mr. Moderator. Hopefully you hear me. Mr. Moderator, um, the, uh, the the towns must be consistent in what goes to the state legislature. Okay. All right, we'll now take the vote. All those who are in favor of the legislation as it currently stands, as it has been amended today, please raise your vote tickets. You are in favor of the legislation. Please raise your vote tickets. Okay, you can put your tickets down. Now we'll take the vote of all who are opposed. If you are opposed to the legislation today, please raise your vote ticket at this time.
While they're counting this last set of votes, I'm just going to let everybody know after this vote, we're going to take a quick poll. It's going to be a non-binding poll. If you were here in June, we did something similar then. And then we're going to adjourn after this. So please, please don't leave right away. When we do leave, just remember to leave orderly fashion. You will have to probably exit the parking lot on the side uh, closer to a zone, the side opposite where you came in, because the side where you came in is still blocked off with sawhorses. Okay, folks, so once again, I'm going to announce the result of the vote. Then we're going to take a very quick non-binding poll question, and then we're going to adjourn. The results of the vote on the main motion were 69 in favor, 27 opposed. So the main motion passes. The legislation has been adopted by the meeting today. <laughs> All right, we're going to do just a, this is going to be a quick poll with a visual show of the tickets. We do have another town meeting coming up, most likely in October, and it's most likely going to need to be outdoors again. So maybe even particularly for those of you who are here in June, did this system work today? Would you come to another town meeting like this? Please show us your tickets if you would. That is a much better response than we got in June. Please show us your tickets if you would not. Yes. All right. That, uh, that was favorable. Thank you. I need a motion to adjourn. All right. Motion has been made and seconded to adjourn. For everybody that's left, please hold out your vote tickets or just drive out of the parking lot. Thank you. Thank you. We are adjourned.